good uh, good afternoon everyone i hope uh, everyone had time to to enjoy lunch and i want to give you a, a very warm welcome to the well to the first session uh, if you want of the hiring research days after the the program uh, and the portfolio presentation that my colleagues have provided this morning so um, i'm very glad to to be sharing this session which will provide uh, an update of of our activities on on hydrogen ballets. I I have here quite a lot of people uh, to share this session with all of us. I will be sharing the agenda in a minute, but uh, but first I want to thank them all. Uh, we we have tried really, even if we have a pack agenda, to bring all uh, the projects that we have on hydrogen ballets, with the exception of few, which um, are not going to be represented today. But we will have the chance to really have a, an overview of, of all what we do and of the ongoing projects. So my name is Antonio Aguiló and here at the Joint Undertaking at the Clean Hydrogen Partnership, I'm somehow coordinating the, the activities on, on hydrogen ballets. So let me share with all of you just a few slides to set the, the context. Let me share the screen first. Okay. Very good. I think now you all can see the, the screen. So as I was mentioning, no. no, you still don't have. Okay. Again, the third click. I was referring to everyone to make sure we do click second time, but I was not doing it myself. So that's uh, perfectly fine. And now I will share the screen. Great. So as I said, we have a pack agenda, but I think it's going to be very interesting content-wise. I, I will give a, a bit of an introduction of why uh, we do what we want in relation to hydrogen ballets, and that will be something around five minutes. Then I, I will have, um, or you will have the, the chance to hear of a bit of an update, if you want, of the state of play of hydrogen ballets within the context of uh, the global uh, hydrogen ballet platform or under the mission innovation, but we will focus on, on the hydrogen ballets uh, picture in, in Europe, and that would be provided by Marcus uh, from Roland Berger, who is uh, actually leading the team implementing the, the hydrogen ballet platform. We will hear in detail from one of our success stories on, on hydrogen ballets, the Green Highland project, who is uh, deploying a hydrogen ballet in the island of Mallorca, a project that started now some years ago, so there are some learnings that we would like to share with all of you. And then what we decided this year is to give a chance to all the projects with whom we signed the grant agreement uh, up to the last few months to present their projects. Of course, these projects have just started, so there will be uh, not a lot of learnings or a lot of progress in, when it comes to the deployment of the ballets, but there are other elements that I think are useful to know. You will be able to picture uh, the type of valleys we support, you will be able to understand which geographies are we supporting and also they will of course share with us some of the challenges that they have gone through up to this point eh, where, where their projects are, are starting. End of the session, we will uh, hopefully have some time for questions and answers where I will encourage everyone uh, online to, to contribute with questions in, in the Slido. So, just to say, as we have been providing RNI support for, for the last 15 years, uh, hydrogen fuel cell technologies have, have matured. There was a point back in time at 2016 where, where we uh, knew on the back of all the activities we support, where we could see also our demonstration projects being successful in deploying hydrogen technologies. And at the point in time where we were already also starting to scale up hydrogen production with, with renewables, mainly through through electrolysis, we brought together actually regions across Europe with an interest on deploying hydrogen projects. And in fact, we started uh, what we call at the time the Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Regions Initiative, which actually was um, an initiative uh, supported by the John Undertaking and Roland Berger was, was in the lead of that, where we brought together uh, regions across Europe, where we were somehow trying to explain to them what type of technologies uh, could be more suited within the context of your um, geography. We were uh, helping them to develop early business cases for different fuel cells and hydrogen applications and supporting them on the identification of funding at, at the time. So it was somehow around a year of collaboration with them where we were bringing industry closer to the regions as well. And we basically led to the signature of uh, 89 memorandum of understandings across 22 European country. We then realized that the appetite was there 
and, and that's why we decided to follow things up with a number of uh, activities. On the one hand, the most obvious one for us, which is our main business, if you want, it's uh, annual support uh, to projects, to research and innovation projects through our annual call for proposals. So that means that uh, we have started to support the investments required for Hadrian Valleys uh, through our call for proposals as well. We also realized that some of these regions with whom we were talking needed some help to move from project idea to, let's say, project uh, concepts, pre-feasibility uh, studies, feasibility studies. They needed some help to move that forward, also trying to understand how to go about mobilizing all the stakeholders that were needed to make those projects uh, mature. And this is why in 2021, we have started to support a number of regions and cities across Europe with project development assistance. Then globally, uh, the concept of Hadrian Valley somehow, which was conceptualized in Europe, expanded worldwide, uh, and then uh, supporting the activities under the mission Innovation, uh, we uh, launched a call for tender to develop the Hadrian Valley platform, which worldwide is mapping, is engaging, the different projects that are uh, looking at deploying Hadrian Valleys. There is an entry point. There are a number of characteristics of the platform, which I'm not going to go into it because Marcus will provide in detail, but somehow this now has become the worldwide reference uh, database of, of Hadrian Valleys. As a spin-up of that, I, I want to mention also, it was the, the creation of the Hadrian Valley uh, partnership platform. Uh, it was a partnership created in 2019 and somehow it formalized the collaboration that we have started in the fuel cells and hydrogen regions uh, initiative. And now uh, there are more than 60 regions across, I believe, around 14 countries where different regions representatives meet uh, regularly to, to discuss and to share experiences on, on how to go and how to develop uh, hydrogen valleys. This slide has been shared this morning for those that were not around, I just want to say that the project development assistant has been very successful. We supported uh, around 11 regions uh, in the first phase of this initiative between 2021 and 22. You can see here the investments that somehow uh, were uh, mobilized or somehow the intentions to mobilize those investments to this uh, assistance that uh, was provided by a team of consultants. Uh, due to the success, we launched another one in 2023 with a focus on cohesion countries, outermost regions, and also uh, EU member states and, and associated countries. You have a great spread throughout Europe, and I think that really shows that this type of assistances are, are really needed really to, to mature uh, different uh, hydrogen projects. Now, more recently, and just a quick mention to another type of support that we are providing, we feel that as we move into this uh, support, our funding, of course, it's, it's useful. It kind of triggers uh, the initiation of many projects, but it's not sufficient to support all the investments. Uh, we also feel that there can be a better or a smoother collaboration with managing authorities across Europe, maybe to capitalize on our experiences, on our skills in relation to, for instance, the, the management of RNI programs on hydrogen. So we have started to work following a call of expression of interest with a number of, um, of managing authorities across Europe, where we hope to conclude with cooperation agreements, either on capacity building, on how to manage knowledge across different programs, and also how to go about the combination of funding between the European, national and regional funding. So we are working with them. This is a pilot. These 10 uh, managing authorities have been selected. And at some point in the first half of 24, we, we will have the outcomes of these uh, collaborations, which we hope will uh, promote and foster collaboration across all this uh, governance level and generate synergies with the with the clean hydrogen partnership and finally as i was saying just a few minutes ago we have been supporting already since 2000 since the call 2014 uh, hydrogen ecosystems type of projects we call them at the time hydrogen territories uh, that was the big hit project back in time in the call 24 the big hit project and then Together with the Regions Initiative, we realized that, yes, we need to continue doing that. Now technology is maturing in this direction. So, of course, we need to support the demonstration of projects that put technical and also um, hydrogen valleys with half a, uh, an economical sense, environmental benefits, uh, also try to support the investments of those. And we've done that since the call 2019, where we supported the Heaven project in Northern Netherlands, 
Call 2020, Green Highland Projects, uh, Hadrian Valley, Mallorca, and then within the new uh, multifinancial framework, since we now uh, are in the Clean Hydrogen Partnership, we also continue supporting valleys in each of our single annual call for proposals. We have uh, we invited to sign grants to nine Hydrogen Valleys in the call 22 for a value of uh, plus 100 million euros across different parts of Europe. And then we are invited or we have invited four additional uh, pro projects under the call 23 to support four additional valleys across Europe. Then on the right, you can see the different geographies. I won't go into the details of those projects. You will hear from most of them under the call 22 today, but you can see the geographical spread uh, in the in the screen. And just to let you know that we hope that if all these projects are successful, if all go ahead um, and deploy all the investments that are needed, then we are talking about an equivalent of around 200 megawatt electrolyzer capacity. And to that, we have to actually add the capacity that we are mobilizing through our demonstration projects, looking at hydrogen for industrial uh, uses, which is around 75 megawatts. So I think with that, you can uh, start having a, a feeling of a scale, which, of course, within the context of the targets that Europe has uh, of six gigawatt by 2030, as in the hydrogen strategy, European hydrogen strategy, well, I think it's quite a, quite a significant quite a significant contribution. And more importantly, we want to showcase, because let's don't forget, these are RNI projects, these are innovation projects. So of course, some things will go right, some things will go wrong, and we also intend in the years to come to capitalize in all the learnings and to really exchange lessons learned for others that want to follow. So we hope that the impact that we will generate is gonna go beyond the projects that we will be supporting with our funding through this type of uh, facilitation of, of, of know-how exchange and, and to transfer of knowledge. So that's a bit what I wanted to, to say, to try to a bit set the framework and the, the tone of today's um, of today's session. And now I think I will go straight into the first presentation, which, as I mentioned, will provide a state of play of hydrogen valleys in Europe. And that presentation will be provided by Markus Kaufmann, who is a partner within Roland Berger, and he's leading the team developing the, the hydrogen valley platform under Mission Innovation. So, yeah, Martin, the, Marcus, sorry, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Antonio. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, having, having us. Um, I think uh, I don't have to do much recap of, of uh, why this platform is, is here today, because you actually went through the journey that this uh, concept has been on since 2016, 17 already. Um, my name is Markus Kaufmann. I'm a partner at Roland Berger, part of our global hydrogen team. Uh, together with our partners um, at, at Inicom, who are in charge of the technical development of the platform, we have built now over two phases the single source of global truth, if you want, on Hydrogen Valley clusters, ecosystems, hubs, whatever you want to call development um, anywhere in the world. Uh, we're doing that under a contract with the Clean Hydrogen Partnership funded by the European Commission, and it's it's part of the Global Mission Innovation Intergovernmental Initiative, of which, of course, clean clean hydrogen is a key key such mission and uh, and pillar. And it's been very exciting to see hydrogen valleys grow uh, and um, and uh, and develop all around the world, but especially in Europe. And based on the on the data we have on on the work we have been doing with the European hydrogen valleys, I want to give a quick snapshot of what's going on and what we see going on in the next nine minutes. Um, so let's start with a brief recap. I think um, probably most people attending the sessions are, are, are aware of what a hydrogen valley is. I just want to recap. It's, it's all about, the, uh, it's all about the, the market development now in this sort of commercialization and initial scaling phase. So moving from individual pilots and demo projects to larger integrated um, projects or portfolios of projects that cover the entire hydrogen value chain. Um, we're looking for larger scale joint investments um, of uh, significant double digit million euros and up to billion euro investment plans. Again, hydrogen value chain coverage is the key, uh, key theme. So a, a central source of clean hydrogen production, de facto most hydrogen valleys are green hydrogen valleys, then sharing infrastructure and serving multiple end users in a clearly defined regional scope, whether that's in a in a physical valley, we have quite a few of those, but also a major port area, metropolitan area, 
or another regional province um, in the country. And we're of course also looking uh, increasingly for sort of true commercial arrangements between parties to set the, the project uh, or the many projects on a, on a real business case. More on that in a second. Um, what we have built is we have built a, a global um, platform, website and source of information uh, that you can access at h2v.eu, H2V where we show a world map of all the valleys um, that, that we have um, mobilized and motivated and that fulfill certain criteria to be featured on this platform with individual profiles, with a lot of data and analysis on what's going on in the projects. And we also feature quite a bit of insights into best practices for Hydrogen Valley development, toolboxes. We have set up a members area for the, for the valleys to interact. And we're also doing quite a bit of work with the developers through uh, workshops and other forms of exchanges. And I'll also get, bring you a few examples of those in a second. So where does the concept stand today? Uh, we have really grown um, very impressively from, from a few first projects only in, in Europe, uh, only yeah, four or five years ago, uh, to, to almost 100 valleys all around the world. The, uh, if you want, the, the heart of the concept is still within Europe. I think that, that reflects where it was uh, coined and conceptualized, but also where the more, most significant uh, policy support for such valley projects is that where the most um, opportunities also to learn from each other, copy and, and, and replace uh, happens. Um, and, and, but, but I want to, I, I, I can't emphasize enough how global this concept has become. And I think uh, the hydrogen industry and community have understood that in addition to top-down policy support and, and regulation, it, it's really required to, to make the hydrogen economy a reality from the bottom up. And that's what the Hydrogen Valley concept is all about. Yeah, um, more than 60 projects uh, in Europe that we can currently list um, and, and map. We see a lot of dynamics, I should also say nowadays, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the Americas, um, Asia Pacific, Middle East, also, also with, inc with an increasing number of developments. And I should say that in, in Europe, we, we are still very much focused on the, I would say, traditional hydrogen lead markets, such as the Netherlands, uh, Germany, the Nordics, um, but we're also seeing um, an increasing number of developments in Central and Eastern Europe, Southeastern Europe, um, and so it's it's again it's a it's a it's a thing that is clearly spreading and growing. The projects today, and this is just the European sample of projects. Yeah, so the sixty something projects we're looking at um, tells us a couple of things. It's still something that is very early stage, obviously. Yeah, like all clean hydrogen projects around the world, we we still have um, we still have a a relatively small share of projects that have actually FID'd uh, or are under construction and operational. But I want to emphasize something. When you look, for instance, at the latest IEA Global Hydrogen View, it's quite telling that the, that the share of, of projects that have FID'd yeah, in the valleys is a lot larger than in overall hydrogen projects uh, all around the world. Yeah, and I think that's precisely because it's about that regional concept of bringing supply and demand together, which is not about, um, you know, very, very large scale export plans, let's say from Australia, the Middle East, uh, Latin America into Europe, but it's about making something happen regionally. And that is, of course, maybe a bit easier and also to, to implement in different phases. So the fact that we have this many projects post FID um, is, uh, is quite significant. And, and I, I should also mention that we're currently updating the Valley um, data on this precisely here. Uh, we do that every six months uh, with the entire community and we're seeing very clear signs of project progress, uh, more valleys starting operations, moving into construction or FIDing. And I think again, uh, while as in hydrogen, you know, as, as Antonio said, sometimes it's, it's two steps forward, one step back, we see very clear progress. Um, I won't spend too much time on, on, on value chain setup and, and choice of technologies. I, I just want to highlight a couple of numbers because interestingly enough, if all the European valleys, the 60 plus we have on the platform were to be built out in the final stage that the, the developers foresee, we would easily get to the 10 million tons of green hydrogen production that the, uh, that the European Commission has set as a 2030 target. We won't get to it by 2030, I should, I should be very clear, but still, 
the plans are there. Yeah, the plans are there. It, when, when it will happen, uh, if and sometimes when it will happen. Um, we also should acknowledge that not all projects will will make it. Yeah, that 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 is always the case in big project development. But at least the plans and the concepts have been developed, and the numbers are quite significant. Um, downstream, we see very sort of a strong legacy in Europe. It's always been the case around hydrogen mobility applications uh, because there's a lot of experience on the continent. But clearly, the the big volumes and big big off takers are increasingly also in the industrial segment. And that's, of course, also driven by the by the supporting regulation now coming out of Brussels, uh, especially Red 2 and Red 3, that is going to help the valleys actually get their business cases together uh, quite a bit. On investment, significant investment numbers, hydrogen costs take those with a grain of salt. I think the six euros are the initial calculations. We all know the industry has seen rather increasing levelized cost of hydrogen than decreasing levelized cost of hydrogen in the next two years. But I think the more the, the long term encouraging uh, result we got from the valleys is that the commercial confidence in projects is growing and and that's an important trend as said as i said the the idea of this is that um, it becomes an increasingly commercial and business case driven um, exercise um, we also have worked quite a bit with the valleys on identifying challenges and and success factors and we've recently tried to dig a bit deeper into those into uh, as part of two successful um, half-day workshops with several dozens of participants of hydrogen um, valley developers and um, uh, one was on, on overall success factors of project development and the other workshop we held was on the collaboration and cooperation potential between the hydrogen valleys. So how can hydrogen valleys that are um, either physically uh, sort of next to each other from a geographic standpoint or that have similar plans, how can they collaborate in the future to make the projects happen, but also then grow the valleys into agglomerations of valleys and actually sort of grow the market um, physically, connecting different islands, if you want, um, in the market. And on the first workshop, I've, I've picked a few slides sort of as a, as a best of, so you get a sense of for what we've been, been working on with the community. We looked at success factors in particular, uh, what it takes to structure viable commercial um, arrangements and commercial structures within projects. And we also looked at project financing factors and we had really interesting insights into what it takes to, um, to get offtake agreements um, going, structure hydrogen purchase agreements from a, from a volume standpoint, from a price standpoint, and especially make sure that the commercial arrangements are such that um, lenders, so, so financiers, banks, etc., would feel comfortable um, uh, project financing uh, hydrogen valley investments. I should say we even have, as of today, some very encouraging examples and case studies of hydrogen valleys that have successfully achieved um, project financing. And again, I think it's, it's in, these are encouraging signs, um, despite all hurdles that have to be uh, overcome, that the industry is, is maturing. Then the, the second workshop we held and the second focus area we, we discussed with the developers was on cooperation between hydrogen valleys. And we think that the key driver for this was to sort of think ahead a bit what, what the next level is going to be or has to be um, after individual project realization. And the motivation for, for that was really to say, even if all these projects happen, it's still not going to be enough to get us on a true pathway to the, to, the, to the net zero emission world under the Paris Agreement, right? So we have to think even bigger and we have to think in, 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 in next levels. Yeah? Even though, again, uh, we understand that all the valleys are very much focused right now on getting off the ground. here. The key topic was around identifying two areas of cooperation between valleys. One is on physical infrastructure and one is on project development uh, cooperation. And the interesting result from the discussion on the infrastructure side, for example, was that we identified a sort of very high potential synergies between the European hydrogen backbone concept and the valley developments that you can see here on the map with the um, production aspirations in the dark blue and light blue circles. So clearly there are clusters um, forming of valleys, let's say in the Netherlands and in Northwestern Germany, in Southern Germany and, uh, and Eastern France, uh, even reaching into Austria, on the Iberian Peninsula, 
around uh, the, the coast of the Black Sea. So it's uh, the, 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 the next level of how valleys can physically grow together around pipeline infrastructure, storage infrastructure, refueling station networks, I think is a, is a critical point to, um, to, is a critical point to take the concept to the next level. We will continue to develop the platform. As I said, updating data will be present at the European Hydrogen Week with the European Hydrogen Valley Awards that uh, the Clean Hydrogen Partnership is giving out. We'll have additional workshops for Valley developers and policymakers in 2024. And we also have a, a major global study on Hydrogen Valley forthcoming in the middle of next year. Thanks a lot. And I hope that sets a little bit the scene for the rest of the session. Thank you, Marcus. Indeed. I mean, I, I find it very interesting, um, very much to the point. I know there is a lot of things that could be said. We could spend pretty much the full hour extracting you know, all the, the analysis and, and, and the things that you are seeing. I mean, I pick on, on the challenges. We show for sure eh, that there are things still to be done, but I, I pick on the third one, no? which you mentioned on technological readiness. I think, again, I want to insist, eh, this is really, at least from the context of what we're doing here at the JU, this is our NI program. Eh? We are still doing technology, if you want, not so much development in the valleys, but integration. And I think that's a quite uh, important element of, of how to, to support the valleys, how to integrate all the different technologies. But I think it's important to, to have that in mind that there is still this need to, to continue supporting technology. And I think for that, it's very good transition because we do have this Hadrian Valley in, in Mallorca eh? that was uh, started, as I mentioned, a few a few years ago, where they have gone through quite a lot of the challenges that Marcus has actually uh, been addressing in his presentation. So I would like with this to introduce to Victor Encinas, who is coordinating the Green Highland project. He's, uh, he's an expert in public and funding grants, and he's working at Enagas Renovable and has a PhD on renewable energies and chemical and materials an engineer from the University of Extremadura in Spain, and he's been working for a decade on, on European projects, mainly on, on renewable energy, but also national uh, projects. So, Victor, we look for really forward to hear your presentation on how things are have gone in Mallorca, how things are going currently, uh, and what it is that you could share with, with others on, on the back of, of this project. So, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. I, can, I think you can see my, my screen yet. Okay, thank you. First of all, uh, I would like to thank you for the invitation to the to the event, and making it possible to bring uh, the Green Island project to be uh, uh, closer to the attendees. Okay, uh, my name is Victor Encinas. I'm uh, from Enagas Renovable. I'm I'm currently the the coordinator of the Green Island project. Okay, so let's uh, start with the presentation. Uh, in this first slide. You will see some general data about the Green Highland project, uh, a project that was funded in 2020 with 10 million euro and started in uh, January 2021, ending at the end of December, December 2025. Being the total eligible cost of the project of more than 21 million euro. Uh, okay, uh, in the following slide, I will walk through uh, the project uh, starting with a brief summary, followed by an explanation of the statute and, uh, status and progress made in the main assets and ending with some risk encountered, lessons learned and key impacts of the, of the project. Okay, uh, today, uh, green hydrogen is already being postulated as the key energy vector for achieving the decarbonization of the planet and meeting those commitments set for 2050 in the fight against climate change. However, at present, uh, there are still some questions about the viability of green hydrogen due among others, uh, to its high production cost. Doubts that will be reduced uh, as technology advance and as more and more, proje more, and more projects uh, are commissioned. Okay, in this sense, uh, the Green Highland project uh, arises, a project whose main objective is bringing together all core elements of the hydrogen value chain into a fully integrated uh, ecosystem, a fully integrated and functioning hydrogen ecosystem that can be replicated across other islands and territories. 
Green Island bring together, uh, combine together public and uh, private uh, collaboration will uh, and will shorten the, the learning curve of the technology, including all aspects related to uh, production, transport, distribution and use of green uh, hydrogen, bringing that the relevant technologies to a TRL 9. OK, um, thanks to the project, it will be possible to uh, reduce the production cost and gain at the same time experience in the processing of a completely new industrial activity. Furthermore, the project will allow and is currently allowing uh, the acquisition of some technical and operational skills in the execution and management of uh, this type of project, which in the absence of companies with a previous uh, previous experience in the in the in the in the sector is highly highly relevant. In other words, the project uh, is an excellent way of acquiring uh, knowledge and experience that is essential for the development of larger projects. Okay, in the following slide, you will see the general outline uh, of the project, a, a project that revolves around the hydrogen production plant that is located in Yoseta, uh, 30 kilometers away from, from Palma, and is built under the umbrella of Power to Green Hydrogen Mallorca, an SPV that was created for this purpose, uh, for the management and, uh, and uh, operation of, of the plant. Okay, the hydrogen production plant is able to produce more than three, uh, uh, 300 uh, tons of hydrogen thanks to electrolyte, an electrolyzer that currently has 2.5 megawatts of, uh, of electrolysis and is fed uh, thanks to the development of two PV plants that together has 14 megawatts of power. Okay, once the hydrogen is, is produced, this is transported uh, by tube trailers, which are already uh, a, a reality in the project and are currently in the, in the plant of, of Gioseta and allow the distribution of this hydrogen at a suitable pressure to the different uh, locations uh, of the project where the end users are located. That's giving rise to the uses in stationary assets thanks to the installation of three fuel cells, uh, one in the Hotel Bahia Iberoster of, of Palma, one in the town of Yoseta, the same place as the, the, the hydrogen production plant is located, and the last one in the port of Palma, thus making possible to uh, provide energy services to the facilities that are located uh, near to these, uh, these fuel cells locations. Then we have also the uses in mobility, thanks to the installation of a hydrogen refueling station in the bus depot of the EMT of Palma, which is the public company in charge of the public transport in the city. Uh, currently, uh, they count already with a fleet of five buses that are ready to be put into operation. Uh, this use also includes the supply of hydrogen to light vehicles for leasing. Okay, and the last of the uses, uh, injection into the natural gas uh, network through uh, the construction of a completely dedicated pipeline that will allow transporting the hydrogen to the point of injection. Thus, the project will allow a fully integrated ecosystem that involving the whole hydrogen value chain uh, will be in operation by next year. Okay, at this point, it's important to mention that all this work would not be possible without the team that is behind the project. A project that is composed by more than 32 partners, a multidisciplinary and well-balanced team that is composed by uh, university profiles, research centers, public uh, companies and also private companies. This providing a wide experience in all relevant aspects of the whole uh, hydrogen value chain, not only from a technical point of view, but also from an analytical, theoretical and practical uh, point of view. Okay, uh, well, once uh, presented the, the project and the key elements of the project, 
In the following two slides, I will show you how, uh, which is the progress made in some of the key assets of the project. Starting, as you will see, for uh, with the hydrogen production plant uh, uh, that is uh, located in, in Yoseta. In this slide, uh, you will see that uh, the progress made in the hydrogen production plan, as I said, but uh, it's important to mention that today uh, the plan is at a 90% of progress, being already carried out all civil and deployment works, and being still pending the final commissioning works of the, of the plant. In this respect, as there three years of tedious work with different suppliers, subcontractors, specialists. The hydrogen production plan is expected to be operational early next year, coinciding with the startup of some of the main uh, end user assets and supplying hydrogen to some of the elements that are, al that are already uh, available in the, in the project. One of these elements that is already available is the 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 buses, the hydrogen buses. In this slide, uh, you will see the progress made uh, with the uh, hydrogen buses. As I have already mentioned previously, uh, we have currently five buses already available in Parma, exactly since March uh, 2020, uh, 2023. Uh, these buses, whose characteristics are shown in the in the slide, are owned by the EMT of Palma, this public company that is in charge of the of the public transport in the in the city, uh, and has been already commissioned. As soon as the hydrogen is available, uh, which is expected, as I have already say, said, um, by early next year, these two buses will start operating on the usual routes that the public transport company uh, runs in Palma, thus providing this transport, uh, this public ser service to the to the population. Okay. Uh, in the next slide, I have gathered the progress made in three main elements of the Green Highland project. On the one hand, the hydrogen uh, tube trailers uh, that under the, leader, the leadership of uh, the company Calvera, which is a key partner in the project, uh, we have already deployed two uh, tube trailers uh, that has a minimum capacity of uh, 462 uh, kilograms of hydrogen at uh, 15 uh, Celsius degrees and that will allow transporting the hydrogen until the locations of the end users at 300 uh, bar. Okay. On the other hand, we have the hydrogen pipeline and the grid injection assets uh, that are almost uh, that have almost reached the operational the operation phase, the operational phase. Uh, these elements under the leadership of Redexis uh, uh, are in the last step of the of the deployment and is expected to be ready at the end of this year and in operation at the beginning of, of next year. The three kilometers and 85 uh, bar dedicated hydrogen pipeline will allow supply hydrogen uh, to the natural gas grease na natural gas grid injection injection point okay and finally the hydrogen refueling stations we are also working on the deployment of this element uh, the relevant equipment uh, has been already manufactured and is almost ready for delivery and uh, this uh, element this hydrogen refueling station will allow uh, refueling both uh, the hydrogen buses uh, at th uh, 350 bar and the, uh, the hydrogen light vehicles are 700 bar. Okay. Once detailed, the progress made in the in the some of the key assets of the of the project. I would like to talk about the the main risk and challenges found uh, during the project that has allowed us to draw some lessons learned. In this respect, I have summarized these summarized these these uh, challenges found in the in the in the slides you you are seeing. Um, first of all, uh, we are talking about a, a completely new industrial industrial activity which has had impacts not only in the technical part but also in the permitting and regulation part. We have learned 
uh, a lot in this in this part but not only us but also the the administration this is a key challenge key challenge we have we have found and uh, yeah uh, this is important to to be mentioned additionally uh, the project has been affected of course uh, by delays in orders equipment uh, deliveries uh, which, although usual in this type of projects, have even been increased uh, by by the pandemic. Uh, important to mention, which had a direct impact on this on this issue. Moreover, uh, in the last year, uh, there has been a, a change in the in the government in the island, and uh, which in a way has had an impact on the project. Uh, has been a challenge. Uh, fundamentally because uh, we involve uh, different partners that depend uh, that are public partners so this also has been a, a challenge that should be should be also mentioned on the other hand the confund the co-funding of the uh, cumulative eu and national funding in the project may, may also uh, be highlighted uh, as this issue uh, have presented some challenges in order to try to uh, to accommodate all, all funding without infringing uh, those rules of accumulation of, of it. This project comes with uh, the EU, EU grant, but also with national uh, grants, as, I will, I, as you will see in another slide I have prepared. And finally, uh, but not less important, uh, it is important to highlight the, the, the 32 partners, uh, the consortium, uh, we have uh, 32 partners with from different sectors, different uh, ways of thinking, and this has been also a challenge that has provided uh, key key important aspects in the project in order to grow uh, in it. And of course, the awareness. I think uh, we should highlight the difficulties uh, found to engage. Uh, with public uh, and not takers. In this sense, we have working on uh, performing on carried out different uh, workshops, different uh, training sessions in order to promote this this sector and increase this 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 improve this this awareness. Okay, however, uh, because we have found uh, we have faced these these challenges. Uh, uh, we can have some lessons learned within the project. Thanks to the novelty of deploying uh, a project such as this one, which covered the entire value chain, the entire hydrogen value chain, the project is making it, pro it possible to acquire some uh, a series of uh, skills that for sure will be useful not only today, but also in the future, uh, mainly when, as I have already mentioned, when we have a lack of companies with previous experience. Among the lessons learned, we, uh, we can highlight uh, how to improve the green gap, uh, green gap or green hydrogen uh, with many financial factors impacting in the project and reducing the, the production cost. Uh, another important issue, uh, another important, important lesson learned, how to process the authorization of a completely new industrial, industrial activity. Uh, this is, as I already mentioned, this is a completely new activity, but not only for us, but also for the public administration. We uh, now we are we already know how to proceed, how, uh, which are the steps to be taken, and uh, this is a key issue that should be mentioned and is important for the for the next projects. And additionally, I could also highlight. Um, that thanks to the project, we are learning how to carry out the EPC uh, of the of the plant of the hydrogen plant. Uh, we we are learning how to proceed with different aspects uh, in the absence of companies with with previous experience. Okay, to acquire this knowledge and deploy the whole ecosystem, it is important to mention the public funding sources that are promoting the project. As I have already mentioned. Uh, apart from those 10 million euros received from the King Hydrogen Partnership, from a national point of view, we should also highlight those 2.5 uh, million euros received from IDAE uh, to deploy the solar PV assets, and those 1.1 million uh, received from the same organization to buy the hydrogen buses. These funds uh, and the public organisms behind them uh, are allowing incentivizing the project and indirectly to uh, the, the entire incentivizing the entire value chains of the green hydrogen economy. 
Thus, uh, we can define the project as a bet for the future, as it is an excellent way to acquire technical and operational skills and uh, in the execution and management of, of uh, hydrogen production, storage, distribution, and application projects, allowing us to understand the challenges associated with the hydrogen technology and those regulatory and policy, uh, policy issues. The project will thus allow acquiring knowledge and experience and making it possible to apply this skill in larger projects. Finally, uh, I would like to highlight the exploitation plan of the project, uh, some details and its impact. As I said at the beginning of the presentation, the core of the project is the hydrogen production plant. In this respect, uh, it is important to highlight, to mention that the first stone of the plant uh, was left uh, thanks to the collaboration agreement between Enagas, Renovable, Acción Energía, IDAE and CEMEX, which through the SPP Power to Green Hydrogen Mallorca, that I have already mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, have invested in two photovoltaic plants, uh, one in Petra and the other one in Joseta, that together has 14 megawatts, and in the current electrolyzer that will be for sure scaled up in the near future. Power to Green Hydrogen Mallorca has been created to manage, operate, maintain, and exploit the hydrogen uh, production plant, enabling to make the most effective commercial offer to increase the demand. Power to Green Hydrogen Mallorca um, becomes the main vehicle uh, for the commercialization of green hydrogen in Mallorca within the duration of the project and beyond, thus uh, inheriting uh, the developments carried out by Enagar Renovable and Acción Energía outside the project. Thanks to the companies behind the project, behind the, the, the from Power to Green Hydrogen Mallorca and also behind the project with a national and international uh, partners, Green Highland we, uh, will generate a greater impact on the European Commission, being possible to highlight this clear commitment to a replicable hydrogen ecosystem. Uh, in fact, within the framework of the project, we are carrying out different replication studies in other islands and territories, including Chile and Morocco. The Green Highland project uh, will thus provide a plan uh, for island decarbonization and thereby contributing to the energy transition and service as a serving as a as an example, as an example, as a model for the future uh, projects, larger projects that will be for sure be a, a real a real case in the near future. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Victor, for showing what you've done so far. I mean, you've mentioned no, 35 months no, since, since the project started, uh, at least since our grant started, because I know that the project somehow was conceptualized uh, earlier than that. But that I think that shows also the, the nature no, of the challenges that uh, you have gone through. But glad to see that uh, everything will materialize and come together, you've mentioned, no, within the early next year, hopefully, uh, first half of 24. So thank you so much. Um, I suggest we we move to the next set of slides, which somehow are, as I mentioned before, eh, is a number of valleys which are supported with these 200 million euros that uh, on the back of the Repower EU plan, uh, we were somehow uh, given, if you want. No? We were top up with 200 million euros uh, when the Repower um, EU action plan was, uh, was published, precisely to do this, precisely to uh, accelerate the number of hydrogen valleys in Europe with the ambitions, uh, the Commission ambitions of doubling the number of, of valleys in Europe, but also to spread their geography. And I think that's quite significant. I mentioned that before, but if you put into account the 15 valleys that hopefully at some point uh, at the end of this year, early next year, we will have ongoing if all the ones that we have left are signed, we are talking here about the coverage of 12 uh, European countries, and that's still only with the first two calls. Eh? So we, we have still additional calls to, calls to come. So I think that really shows already uh, a success, if you want, no? in, in spreading uh, these initiatives, in spreading the interest of, of, of what hydrogen can, can do no? for, for different territories. So without further ado, we are going to go now into this set of um, six presentations uh, that will give a short overview of around six, seven minutes of these uh, projects that have just started. And the first one is actually the, the North Adriatic Hydrogen Valley, 
which is a cross-border uh, Hadrian Valley. I won't give any details because for that we have um, Dr. Uh, uh, Yerne Hasselar, who is basically working as a um, head of the research department at the Holding Slovenske Elektrame in, in Slovenia. And she's basically coordinating in the day-to-day -to -day together with, with one of his colleagues, the, the, Hadrian, uh, the North Adriatic Hadrian Valley project. So, Jerneha, I'm really looking forward to hear from you and, and to, to see how, how things are going in these first months of the, of the project. The, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for kind introduction and uh, thank you very much also for the invitation to the to the event. Uh, my name is Irnea and I will present our uh, large scale North Adriatic Hydrogen Valley, uh, which is the one, the most promoted hydrogen valley in uh, right now in Europe. I think that uh, it's uh, one of the first transitional hydrogen valleys in the European Union, uh, bringing together two countries, uh, Slovenia. Near Croatia and one region, the autonomous region of Frulia Venezia Giulia in Italy. It was submitted in September last year uh, and uh, has officially started uh, only a few months ago. Uh, and uh, we see that total project budget is quite high. It's more than 345 million euros, of which the Clean Hydrogen Partnership contribution will be among um, uh, almost 25 million euros at the end of the project. Uh, the consortium of the North Adriatic Hydrogen Valley consists of seven, 37 partners from uh, four countries um, with their associated part companies uh, where Holding Slovenska Elektrana or HSC uh, is the coordinator of the project. Uh, the consortium includes partners from industry, research institutions, and ministries, which is very important for the for the development of Hydrogen Valley, uh, and will be demonstrating cross-border integration of hydrogen production, distribution, and also consumption uh, for the, in the end of the about 5,000 tons produ production of the hydrogen with the exchange of about 20% uh, cross-border uh, between the countries. Uh, the whole area of the North Adriatic Hydrogen Valley envisage the production and distribution of renewable hydrogen, uh, which will all include all three participant countries. Uh, for example, in Slovenia, uh, we intend to produce around 3,500 uh, renewable hydrogen per year. 1,000 ton of hydrogen will be produced in Croatia. In around slightly more than 120 tons of hydrogen will be produced in Italy. Of total amount of uh, renewable hydrogen uh, produced, uh, heavy industry uh, could consume around 3,000 tons per year, uh, transport around 1,700 tons per year, and the remained uh, amount of hydrogen will be used in the energy sector. Therefore, uh, uh, we will develop 17 pilot projects with covering the entire hydrogen valley of chain uh, from one side of production and another side of distribution, storage and the end use uh, with the starting TRL from six and the final from eight to nine. Uh, our project is divided into 11 working packages uh, within the framework of work package 3, 4 and 5. Uh, those 17 initial pilot projects will be uh, procured uh, and this sub-project will contribute on one hand to the production of hydrogen within the hydrogen valley. On the other hand, uh, it will be showcased to the broad utilization of renewable hydrogen across various sectors. Uh, that means that this sector range from heavy industry, um, most important for the cement industry, iron and steel, and also glass industry, and on another side to, to the transportation and to the energy sector. Uh, the whole duration of the project is uh, six years. Uh, and in the first two years, we are expecting to involve the completion of all necessary documentation, the securing all the funds ne ne needed to to uh, produce uh, the, the project, obtaining all required permits, uh, specify all characteristics uh, for the project, 
and in another second two years, uh, we will focus to the procurement of all necessary equipment, construction, uh, and the commissioning the pilot equipment. Uh, and this will be followed by the two years of operation and uh, demonstration of the targeted production distribution quantities of renewable hydrogen. In line uh, to describe the project implementation, an institutional framework for incentives in cross-border hydrogen transport will be developed, including the establishment of ASBL, uh, which will be a non-profit organization under Belgian law, uh, which will help us to, to ensure involvement of all actors of the ecosystem uh, and to transfer those, that legacy of the project experience. Uh, the North Adriatic ASBL will become the governance model, the government's body of the valley, uh, and it will fact, it act as a fair, transparent and equipped body uh, to represent all the stakeholders under the North Adriatic Valley. Uh, we know that those 25 million of uh, funds from Clean Hydrogen Partnership for us meant a lot, but uh, to the whole valley, uh, it's just a, a little drop into the ocean. And we know that when we will apply and to, to finish all the, um, the project, the test beds, we need to need additional national funds also to, the, to this call. Uh, and we we, when we applied to the project, all three countries um, in, in the project had to represent the possibility of grants uh, from various sources, including the cohesion, cohesion funds, re regional funds, recovery and resilient funds, uh, and also modernization fund, uh, and etc. So that we can bring uh, around 200 million euros also those, those uh, additional national funds. Uh, so that in the North Adriatic Valley, we will foresee a very wide set of awareness raising activities to target a reach uh, to the project stakeholders. Then a huge number of people will be reached. Uh, more than 15 events will be um, disseminated, uh, five annual conferences, 10 activities, for example, and also a many high, high number of students will be involved to the to the process of the, the project, uh, we are very proud that we will have also H2 student uh, developed under the project, which will involve six 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 thousand young students. Uh, and the aim of the H2 student is to strengthen the competence in the hydrogen sector, um, and to to fulfill all the necessary competences uh, in that field. Also, we will uh, deliver hydrogen cafe. To, to attract more stakeholders, uh, citizens, researchers, students, and other NGOs. And also, all communication program will be dedicated to the high school students that will be developed to promote uh, hydrogen to, to a broad uh, uh, focus. What about the replication activities? Um, we attend to, to transfer the hydrogen Net North Adriatic Hydrogen Valley model to the, at least five additional hydrogen valleys. Uh, for this, uh, we will have the work package 11 in specific activities implemented. Uh, for example, digital twin will be developed and also will be made available in other similar contexts to facilitate the model uptake. Uh, the organization of hydrogen valley uh, will be set between uh, all three countries, Slovenia, Italy, and Croatia, uh, uh, which can represent a unique example of very good collaboration between countries uh, and can be transferred to other hydrogen valleys as well in Europe and abroad. Uh, and also, with our knowledge, we will support the development of hydrogen valleys um, in, uh, in, in, other, um, in other replication processes. As I mentioned before, uh, risk and challenges are very important in uh, so large scale hydrogen valleys. And uh, in our case, uh, activities were applied uh, into the project to attempt to decrease the probability uh, and impact of all possible negative events uh, so that we identify and uh, to plan how to address the risks. Uh, and uh, we thought that Along other risks that we have found, 
uh, he, he, we have also most important in our project because it's very large amount of uh, stakeholders, a large amount of uh, project partners. And also, uh, we found out that uh, in our uh, three countries, we, we can have a lot of regulatory issues. For example, denial of necessary permits or opposing provision of national law. Uh, and also spatial issues, substantial opposition from local communities or environmental activists. And also uh, one of the risks is the substantial lack of public funding. If you will, uh, for example, don't be uh, on time with uh, project development, uh, maybe some of the uh, proposed funding can be closed for us and this can uh, address as a high risk for this project. So. Uh, for the end, I would like to show you now the promotional video of our successful kickoff meeting that we were held in Porto Rose uh, in September uh, in Slovenia. So maybe if someone can can uh, deliver that video. Our website, which is available for everyone to, to visit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yoneha. Uh, I don't think we could hear the sound of the video, but I think the, the images were quite illustrative. That was actually a recent kick of meeting, which was actually very well attended by not only the members of the project team, actually, but also by high level representative of the of Croatia, also from the from the Italian region and, and, and from um, I'm from Slovenia, so that was very, very, very big success. So thank you so much for for sharing all what you plan to do, all the challenges ahead. And I suggest, um, in view of the time constraints, that we move actually to to the second large scale valley that we are supporting under the call 22. Uh, this is another uh, cross border valley, uh, which is led uh, on the coordination side by Dr. Jata Yusila. Uh, she currently is the CEO of Click Innovation in Finland, which is an open innovation uh, cluster which focuses on bioeconomy, circular economy and energy systems. I have to say I'm looking forward to, to hear from you because I know each of the projects are different, different approaches, different governances. So really, I'm, I'm, I'm very keen to, to hear from you during the next seven minutes. Um, yeah, Yata. So the floor is yours. Thank you and thank you for the kind introduction and let me just now put my presentation on presentation mode. I hope that you see it well at the, now. Good. So indeed, I'm at the Yusila and acting as CEO of Click Innovation, which is a, an open innovation cluster operator based in Helsinki, Finland. And I was just now hearing the previous presentation. So Click already is a legal entity. We are non-profit and neutral, so basically a very suitable coordinator for this kind of collaboration, what we are doing with our Baltic Sea Hydrogen uh, Large Scale Valley project. Uh, as said, we are also, also quite new, so we started our operations in June this year, and the project will run now for five years. The total budget is 33. 3.2 million euros out of which 25 come from the clean hydrogen partnership and most of the rest of the financing is private um, only a small share comes from the public source uh, national source um, and this is now the illustration of our valley so our ultimate goal is actually build an even maybe i think geographically larger valley than we just heard from the 
from the southern part of Europe. So our goal is to establish a Baltic Sea-wide cross-border uh, hydrogen valley. And we will start building that from uh, the main valley that is located uh, between the southern part of Finland and basically covers the entire Estonia. So it is already the main valley is a cross-border one. And in the main valley region, we of course have most of our uh, project participants and uh, most of the investment cases that are connected to our valley are located in the main valley region. But we do also have seven other countries and regions in, involved. One region uh, from uh, each of the countries that are surrounding the Baltic Sea, so Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, and even Norway, where the, basically the Baltic Sea starts, Baltic Sea starts. And with this group of people and companies, we are really uh, now uh, for five years, we will join our forces to build this uh, full Baltic Sea wide cross border hydrogen economy. The project itself is co coordinated by Click Innovation and Gasgrid Finland, which is the infrastructure infrastructure company in Finland. And then um, just a few main things about our valley concept. First of all, the consortium that we have built, it covers the entire value chain. So we have several players that are active in the renewable electricity production, several that are investing in hydrogen production. Then we have infrastructure companies and transmission and transport companies. We have technology providers, also fuel cell companies. And then we have several industrial industries uh, from the youth sectors involved. And jointly, we have selected in, in sort of in our R&D type of focus that we will very much put effort on uh, maximizing the sector integration possibilities that we have, uh, especially for instance with heat, excess heat production. And then we will also jointly put effort on developing what we call a dynamic multi-market model called hydrogen pool. Um, we have, as I said, uh, several like more than 10 investment cases that are connected to our valley. And they involve, of course, hydrogen production, but also several end use sectors like the chemical industry, refining industry. We have a petrochemical case, fertilizer industry case, and then the transport industry is also involved, especially we are focusing on maritime sector. And then we have uh, energy industry related cases also connected. Uh, when it comes to the project itself, so we will uh, focus now in the beginning on doing a proper Baltic Sea region diagnosis work that involves also sort of um, a really deep dive analysis of the renewable energy production potential in the regions involved. Then we will proceed into the co-creation activities for the Valley Visions and also we are building or co-creating a vision for the market model. After that, we then will execute and or develop the actual hydrogen pool multi-market model. And then in the end of the project, we will build growth plans for all the valleys that are involved. So the sub valleys or the connected valleys and then uh, execute uh, exploitation and replication activities. And alongside all of this, we will then, of course, focus on our sector coupling and system dynamics related work. And then the use cases and the investment cases will also live there alongside of the uh, collaborative work. And this is a uh, current version of our roadmap until 2030 with the investment cases. So we have uh, the first plants are already being build, built and the first uh, should be start production uh, by the end of next year uh, with a capacity of 3000 tons of new renewable hydrogen cap um, production per year. And then the next plants will be commissioned so that by the end of this project, we should have more than 15,000 tons of renewable hydrogen production capacity in place. And by 2030, around 50,000 tons. And the plants that are, are already under construction, they have received funding, additional funding, uh, either from the European Innovation Fund or IPSE or 
recovery funding or some other type of national funding from our ministry or from the Finnish Climate Fund. Uh, of course, not all the projects that are in pipeline have yet secured their full financing, but the first ones they have. So in that sense, it looks good. Regarding how we are organized, though this is a kind of a, maybe a boring picture of uh, how a project is constructed, but I just want to sort of guide your attention to this one group that you see there in the middle called Valley Steering Group. So we have organized ourselves so that the industries that are active in, in the implementation or in the investment projects, they form this group called Valley Steering Group, and they will follow the development or the establishment of this full hydrogen economy in the Baltic Sea region. They will closely collaborate with what we call use case groups. So each of our investment case will have a use case group that will contain at least one person or who is closely connected with the investment decision side of the project then one technical expert that will collaborate with us regarding the technical KPIs, then one safety focused expert who will be also a member of our valley-wide safety expertise group, and then a comms person who will participate in then our communication activities. And then we have also planned our external advisor report composition so that it will actually really um, support the work of our Valley Steering Group. So although this looks like now just like a project administration group, but it's not only that. So it's also supporting the really the Valley development, not just project execution. And then after the project is ended, has ended, our sort of vision at this moment is that the hydrogen pool multi-marketplace will connect all the players together uh, commercially, so in their commercial sort of exchanges. Regarding the major uh, biggest risks and challenges for our success, uh, we see these three things that we have listed here. So first of all, the regulatory barriers for implementation. Um, we have already faced some of these barriers with some of the investment cases involved. Then failure in raising financing for the invest the the loss uh, the, the investments that are not yet sort of fully in the uh, in the uh, not in the construction phase and then the social acceptance and our solution to overcome these barriers is that we will implement the pentahelix kind of collaboration model throughout the project and and in this work we will also involve our uh, external advisory board members and i think i have now used my time so please just follow us either through our website or in LinkedIn or in the previous Twitter. So we are actively telling about our advancements there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you and thank you so much for, for sticking to the time. Uh, indeed, I mean, big, large scale, Vale. I wouldn't dare to compare uh, with any other one, but let's see now um, who will be at the forefront of deploying things. So I think that could be even more interesting, but thank you. Yet I think a very interesting, very different type of organizational arrangement within the project, but uh, lots of things to be done and, and to learn from. So mm -hmm. thank you. And now uh, we move into, we're moving to Turkey actually, and we are going to present uh, the first of uh, four small scale Halgen ballets that uh, will be presented in the remaining of the session. And for that, we have uh, Mehmet Volkan, who is a chemical engineer and he's working actually at the development agency within the region of South Marmara uh, in Turkey and he's uh, coordinating the High South Marmara project. So yeah, Mehmet, the floor is yours and thank you for, for, your, for your time. Thank you. I don't think we hear you. I don't know if it's on our side, but now can we you hear me. You. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now we hear you. Okay, really. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Please. Th th thank you, Antonio. Thank you. Uh, hello to everyone from Turkey. Uh, I will introduce uh, the first hydrogen valley project uh, of Turkey, and I'm the project coordinator. And uh, uh, South Marmara is one of the 26 regions. Uh, in Turkey, and it is the leading region in terms of 
installed renewable uh, renewable installed capacity, which has exceeded uh, three gigawatts as of 2023. And uh, we want to use this renewable potential to in, in the production of uh, green fuels uh, to to decarbonize our part to abate sectors and to export these fuels to European countries. And uh, you will see the uh, uh, you you see the project details of High South Marmara. Uh, High South Marmara consortium is awarded with 8 million euros and the total project budget is nearly 38 million euros and uh, we have 15 members uh, in the project in the project consortium and uh, three of them are uh, out of turkey and uh, 15 uh, 12 partners are from turkey When, we, when it comes to the main elements of our hydrogen wallet project, uh, there are two main investments. And uh, the core one and the mo more critical one is the green hydrogen plant, which comprises the, uh, the uh, four megawatt electrolyzer. And it, it, uh, it leads us uh, to 500 tons green hydrogen production. We will distribute it to four different industrial area and our off takers are operating in ceramic, glass, chemical and steel industry. And uh, we are focusing not only green hydrogen production, but also its derivatives and solid derivatives and, and liquid derivatives. So uh, the feasibility studies will be conducted in green methanol and green ammonia and another important investment uh, will be carry, carried out by Etimad and one of our partners, one of the state-owned company in Turkey. Uh, uh, they make an investment for the pilot uh, plant to produce sodium borohydride. Boron is a promising material and we have, uh, I, I mean the region has around 20% of all the global boron reserves. And uh, this new boron chemical uh, is very important, storing hydrogen in a solid state. And we will use uh, that boron chemical to develop a new power system. And uh, it will be an ideal solution for, an, for energy production in off-grid applications and uh, disaster areas as well. And also uh, within the scope of the project, Turkey's first domestic hybrid ceramic kiln uh, will be developed. And this is also uh, one of the firsts of Turkey. And we, uh, the implementation phase uh, of the uh, project started on 1st of July. It's very new. Uh, the core activities has already begun. And there are eight work packages uh, in the in the in the project. The most critical one is, of course, work package two, related with the green hydrogen plant investment, and uh, it is expected to be fully commissioned uh, at the end of the third year of the project. And you will you see the project financing breakdown. Uh, our largest uh, investors are Enerstoretim, Etimaden, and Linda Gas, uh, and 21% uh, of the total budget is coming from Clean Hydrogen Partnership. Uh, as South Marmara Development Agency has a critical uh, mission in this project as a governmental organization. We are affiliated to Minister of Industry and Technology, and we have critical tasks to ensure the processes in the project uh, run smoothly and safely. So especially uh, commercial agreements on uh, the sale of green hydrogen is highly dependent on investment mechanism uh, to be accepted by the government side. So all the 
uh, industrial uh, sector players in our projects are waiting for the completion of official procedures uh, uh, in the support mechanism. And uh, there are some training activities uh, in our project. We almost completed an IPA project, Instrument for Pre-Accession project uh, in the region. We established uh, an, an renewable energy training centers with well-equipped laboratories. The total budget of the project is around 8 million euros. And in our, within the scope of our hydrogen volley project, there is an complementary activity. Uh, we will uh, take the first steps to establish a training center which focuses on offshore wind and hydrogen. Uh, so uh, this is also an important because South Marmara trying to, is trying to be a center of uh, trainings, education in renewable uh, energy technologies. And uh, we also, I mean, we have a learn and teach strategy in the project. Uh, we have almost, we will try to know uh, some of the major hydrogen valleys in Europe much better. And I hope we can replicate a uh, South Marmara model, especially in Mediterranean uh, countries where we have uh, partners in the consortium. And there are uh, uh, some communication and dissemina dissemination activities uh, in our project. This is a sign, it is a photo from a signing ceremony uh, uh, which was held in the presence of Turkish, former Turkish Minister of uh, Industry in, in, uh, in Istanbul. And right now we are one of the eight, as Marcus said, eight, four uh, hydrogen volleys around the world. We are certificated uh, by Hydrogen Volley Platform, which is initiated by Mission Innovation and Clean Hydrogen Partnership. And our website is coming soon. And uh, we haven't uh, 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 carried out the kickoff meeting yet. And at the end of November, we will help our kickoff meeting, general assembly meeting, and executive uh, meeting together. We will participate in COP uh, 28, and there will be a hydrogen volley workshop in Istanbul at the beginning of 2024. And we have some interaction with uh, EU funded uh, projects, and one is from uh, Norway, Robinson Projects, and the other one is green hydrogen at Blue Danube. And uh, especially green hydrogen Blue Danube project is important for us because we are trying to, uh, so we, are, we are searching for feasible roads to export green fuels, hydrogen and its derivatives to European countries. And Blue, uh, Danube River may give us some opportunities to send those green uh, alternatives, the green uh, fuels. And right now in the region, there are two ongoing project, projects. Uh, High South Marmara Valley project is one of them. And there is an uh, agency funded uh, project as well. Uh, we are uh, developing a homegrown electrolyzer within the scope of that project. And uh, with a 50 million euros to cause Marmara project, green transition of Turkish blue has being submitted to uh, General Directorate, Directorate of Maritime, which is affiliated to Minister of Infrastructure. And uh, it is under assessment right now. And we are trying to integrate a road transport, uh, road transport project to our wallet project as well. And uh, uh, for a last slide, I can categorize uh, risks and challenges into three uh, titles. Falling natural gas prices are a hurdle. Maybe we, we may talk another uh, picture uh, uh, last year, in the previous year, but now uh, natural gas, uh, gas prices are falling, not just in Turkey and uh, in Europe as well. Long delivery times for electrolyzers. Yeah, it is another, another hurdle. 
for the projects. And these new technologies needs uh, financial support. So investment mechanisms for closing the cost caps are very important as well. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. To be honest, we are very happy to, to have you on board in this family of projects and, and happy to see also the attempts not to, to work together across Mediterranean countries, because I think it's certainly a, an area also of, of importance to, to colleagues in the Commission and to see also how many synergies, how many other funding you are trying to tap in as well, not to complement um, this project. So thank you for, for sharing all of this with us. And now I suggest we move uh, to not so far from Turkey, we go now to Greece and we will have a presentation by Mr. Konstantinos Chathifotis, who is the manager of European Affairs at Motor Oil. I know, Konstantinos, you have had vast experience working as well as advisor for EU funding in different contexts uh, within the Greek ministries, also working at European level here in Brussels. And we're really looking forward to see how your valley is looking, what are the challenges ahead. So please, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, Antonio. I'm trying to share my screen. I hope it will work. Not yet. Yeah. It's the last click you have to do. It's... Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not working. Otherwise, we can maybe ask someone on the technical Team to share, otherwise I can I can do it. Myself. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I made yeah. it. Yes, I'm sure for that. Yes. Ah, that's it. Yeah, brilliant. You Thank you. Cheers. Sorry for that. Yes. So uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to the Clean Hydrogen Partnership for this initiative, uh, and I think it's uh, substantial support given to initiatives around uh, Europe. And I really believe, with the experience that you referred to before, that is one of the best funding mechanisms currently in Europe that is providing tangible and substantial uh, support to, uh, to create this uh, European hydrogen market. And I think also that this is a very useful event for all of us, uh, very interesting, and uh, we see different concepts and models, different approaches, and this also enriches our uh, perspective, our angle, of what it could, uh, the way it could, uh, you know, move forward in the future, also with uh, synergies. So I uh, have the honor to to be the project coordinator of uh, a very promising project, three years. Um, this is uh, a project that also started uh, this summer, uh, together with uh, the other eight uh, projects uh, of uh, the last year uh, call. And um, the project budget uh, is uh, about 10.5 million euros and um, the award we got from uh, Clean Hydrogen Partnership is 8 million. Currently we're about 6.5% uh, of, uh, of implementation. Uh, I had the impression that our, uh, our project had uh, quite a big number of uh, participants, of uh, partners. However, I see that you are somewhere in the middle. We have 26 partners from five different countries, the Netherlands, Austria, Greece, Cyprus, and Egypt. And we have managed to have a very strong uh, participation from pub, private and public sector companies, local and regional authorities, and academic and research institutions. Now, uh, our project is uh, located around uh, the, uh, our refinery in Corinth, motor oil refinery. And the TREES project aims to um, foster the development of hydrogen economy in Greece with great potential for dynamic expansion to the Balkans, Southeastern Europe, and the Eastern Mediterranean. One of the, I could say, novelties of our approach uh, in creating this uh, hydrogen valley is that we kept the production of hydrogen outside the, the project and uh, that was also due to the um, lack we had to have it uh, funded also by clean hydrogen partnership in the context of uh, another call 
So our project Ethera, with our project Ethera, we are currently building a 30 megawatts electrolyzer in our refinery. And there, uh, this is the point that we connect Ethera with Trieris. We will manage to uh, compress hydrogen in order to use a virtual pipeline and of course a physical pipeline. In the project of Trieris, we have uh, foreseen five different pilots. One is the use of uh, green hydrogen in uh, industry. One, uh, another pilot is uh, the use of hydrogen for uh, buses, hydrogen buses in Athens. A third pilot is the use of hydrogen in a fuel cell for auxiliary operation of a very innovative uh, boat. And uh, last, uh, an, uh, another uh, pilot is uh, two cars, uh, light duty cars, that they were going to be used by the municipality of Lutraki, where our refinery is located. And uh, the, the company that operates Olympia Odors, the uh, TNT highway that connects, uh, connects Athens with Corinth and Patras, the big port of Greece towards the uh, west. And uh, the last pilot is uh, uh, that will be installed in the port of Piraeus. It will provide electricity again from fuel cell in order to, to charge uh, electric uh, cars. And then through uh, the physical pipeline, uh, we will provide, uh, we will inject uh, hydrogen to the national uh, pipeline. Um, no, no, with uh, the, the grant we have got, we, 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 um, we believe that we managed to leverage uh, 115 million euros from the partners that participate in the, in the project. And then we could go up to 408 million euros, potential direct and indirect uh, leverage of investments. Uh, we are looking currently to, to use other funding tools and mechanisms such, such as uh, the RRF, Connecting Europe Facility, Horizon Europe, as well as uh, loans and equity. Um, regarding training and skills, uh, Trees Valley Development Operation will run in parallel with uh, focus training activities, uh, over four online training tutorials, four webinars and two PhD summer schools, 10 training programs focus on the skill of personnel and uh, there is young research network in order to provide counsel and training to young researchers and engineers with support from the external advisory board to help them excel and develop their careers. Regarding the application, we collaborate with Heaven, uh, Viva and PNG High West Valleys. We, we want to transfer our knowledge to our colleagues from Cyprus and Egypt and also to connect with other international valleys from mission innovation countries. Um, from in view of uh, sector-based replication and uh, building upon and multiply, uh, multiply activities, we, we, we want to see uh, more maritime applications, more ports and vessels, road transport applications, more HRS and vehicles of the regions, and industrial applications, additional industries uh, to benefit from the supply plan of three years, as well as the retrofit know-how for the factories. Lessons learned. I could uh, use the Socrates saying, uh, is that meaning that uh, what I know is that I don't know anything. And I would say that uh, I could use also the slide from our colleague uh, Victor from Mallorca, one of the same here, uh, risk for a regulatory environment, delays in procurement, uh, change in governments, engagement of public authorities, but also um, uh, uh, initiatives to co-fund the project. We have uh, held our first kickoff in Athens uh, in September. We have built our uh, social media and uh, we and the, the last point that I would uh, like to to bring uh, here in in this uh, in this uh, occasion is the synergies with other projects and programs. I refer to Ephira, but currently uh, we are also building uh, two new HRSs in Agi Theodori near Corinth and in Akrata near Patras, in order to create a highway a hydrogen highway 
from west to the center of, of Greece, to Athens, and also to uh, refer to the Irish pro project that was uh, is about to sign its uh, grant agreement. Uh, it will be funded from Innovation Fund. It, uh, it is about installing a CC a US system in our refinery and uh, together with the CO2 captured from the system and the Greek hydrogen produced from our electrolyzer, we will be able to, uh, to produce e-methanol, of course, together with uh, providing blue hydrogen and lowering uh, about uh, 500,000 CO2 emissions uh, from our current uh, emissions. Um, so uh, as, as a recommendation looking ahead, uh, one proposal that I have already made in the past, and I, I, I believe that it should be further discussed, to see how these uh, small valleys could become larger, uh, either through uh, more funding or with uh, merging them with, with other, uh, on a regional basis, for example. Inclusion, further synergies uh, with CINEA uh, and uh, connection in order to promote formal hydrogen corridors connecting uh, hydrogen valleys. Um, to delimit the geographical uh, deployment of future hydrogen projects. Thank you very much for your attention and for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much to you, Constantinos, and, and for your kind words. We, we appreciate um, what you said. And as I was checking some uh, slide of questions, which probably we won't have time to address them, I, I saw too about, well, can different fundings be combined? And also, what about the skills? Because probably some of the regions do not have much skills on on hydrogen, so how they go about it. I think you answered some of those through your example. So I, I think I want to illustrate that that's probably a common element that will appear in all the valleys, but I appreciate you you, you point them out uh, so clearly. So thank you so much again. And um, we still stay in Greece. Uh, we move to the project Grave Hydrogen, which is going to be presented by Dr. Spiridon Economou, and he's a director general at Hydrogen Technologies in UNICE. So, yeah, I give you the floor, um, Spiro. So, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. I don't think we hear you. Correct, or is it me only? Excuse me, can you hear me now? Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation uh, and the opportunity given to present Crave H2, uh, the Crete Aegean hydrogen value. My name is P uh, Spiridon Konomu, and I'm heading the UNIS Hydrogen Technologies. So this project has been financed. Uh, excuse me, I just hear. Has been financed uh, uh, under the small-scale hydrogen valleys, where uh, the kickoff meeting was first of June, with a total budget of uh, uh, 11 million euro. Uh, 8 million euro is the CHP contribution, while for the moment, at least three more million euro are needed. Uh, by November 30, 10% of the projects should have been uh, fulfilled. So the partners mainly are uh, from Greece, uh, uh, the Center for uh, Research and Technology, uh, Greece, UNIS, that is the, co the coordinator, the Hellenic Electricity Distribution Network Operator, uh, Union Coach Services is uh, the largest uh, tourist operator in Crete. Uh, Crete has about 700,000 people uh, inhabitants, which is more than doubled during uh, summertime. Uh, we are honored with the participation of the government of Crete, while uh, technologies are provided by Denora from Italy, the electrolyzers. Uh, we have the think tank, the Politecnico di Torino, and Ballard Europe from Denmark supplying uh, the fuel cells. So actually, what we want is we want to produce green hydrogen. We only talk about green hydrogen to produce 500 tons per year with the electrolyzers of the Nora, while uh, three megawatt alkaline electrolyzers will be installed in the island, while units will provide the green uh, energy 
and of course the energy management system. The objective of the project is to decarbonize the transportation sector and the electricity grid, at least initially. So uh, the project uh, goes on with uh, storing the hydrogen and developing a refueling station to fuel the, to, uh, the buses uh, from Union Coach Services. And uh, with this aim is to decarbonize transportation gradually starting with uh, uh, this step, but also decarbonizing the electricity grid with 400 kilowatt PEM fuel cell provided by Ballard. Future applications are foreseen in the maritime sector, but also in the power production where uh, the installation of the project is the southeast east side of Crete, where the public power corporation has a thermal power plant and as far as we know, they want uh, to invest in decarbonizing the plant. So by today, we have uh, uh, already fulfilled our what uh, the deliverables to be supplied, the project management, hard book, data management uh, plan and so on. But what I want to, to state is that challenging is to have the licensing and permitting procedures for all hydrogen systems and to have the final hydrogen safety plan by month 24 and of course uh, what we see called uh, is the analysis of operational data of the hydrogen valley in the island of crete and the life cycle assessment and life cycle costing which is important uh, what we want to to the objectives which are aligned with uh, uh, the uh, hydrogen uh, clean hydrogen partnership we want to improve security and resilience of the energy system by producing hydrogen um, based on powered by local locally available re renewable energy sources and of course to create the market uh, for hydrogen risks and challenges are seen the main risks and challenges for the moment are seen in the lack of the legal framework for licensing and permitting for the electrolyzers and the fuel cells i think this is uh, a barrier that common in many countries and for Greece that we expect to have the national hydrogen strategy very soon released and of course the connection of the fuel cell to the grid where uh, we try to interfere with the distribu electricity distribution network of course even though we run the project for almost six months we're very active in communication and dissemination in the morning, I have been presenting uh, the, the Crave H2, the Crete Valley, at the 27th Annual Energy and Growth uh, Conference uh, downtown Athens, uh, which was very well accepted, accepted. And actually, it gave the message, this message, that renewable energy sources are needed to, to produce green hydrogen, which is also used as a storage energy storage and uh, uh, i think the message was very well accepted cooperation so crave with the aim as i mentioned to decarbonize transportation sector and electricity grid uh, has interactions with 24 7 them where we expect to implement a zero emissions network with a reversible solid oxide cell and um, suitable for electricity and gas grids this started in february still running for 36 months but also the crit valley which starts next uh, month december 1st where we have also the concept in the island of crete that will be also the island of crete the concept of community energy labs we want to have social cohesion and we have citizens we need citizens to get involved in this value chain as I previously described, which means green electricity production, uh, production of green hydrogen via electrolyzers, storage, distribution, and uh, use it uh, in buses, cars, and um, for the electricity grid. Uh, what I mentioned to have this project sustainable, we need low cost energy. So the Greece Africa Power Inter Interconnector 
which is one of the two intercon uh, grid connections uh, projects between Egypt and Greece, is now uh, aiming to power uh, hydrogen uh, projects. Because if we don't uh, have low cost energy, uh, the pro uh, hydrogen production is not sustainable. The same applies for the Aegean project, where there will be Unisys planning to install 582 megawatt wind parks on remote and uninhabited Greek islets at the Aegean Sea. And uh, the Telos Smart Island, it's an autonomous island, uh, became autonomous with a winter buck wind turbine, solar PV, and energy management system, which is ideal for uh, small energy dependent and autonomous communities. And the remote uh, project, which acts as an energy storage solution. We talk always about batteries, hydro, uh, hydro projects for energy storage, but I think we should focus also on uh, hydrogen energy storage solutions. So recommendation for looking ahead and with actually with uh, go hand by hand with clean hydrogen partnership is we have to create a suitable framework for licensing and permitting hydrogen projects and uh, to have national European and national targets for electrolyzers, green hydrogen production, which will support electrolyzers and hydrogen uses and create an encouraging investment climate in the hydrogen sector. Of course, with the initiative of local communities to have this uh, social cohesion, as I mentioned before, and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you to you indeed. And thank you also for sharing all these other initiatives you are involved, which uh, actually show also no, how you how you plan to go to to go no, uh, beyond what, what we are supporting. It's very important to, to know that. So thank you for that. And, and I'm afraid we will have now to move straight to the last presentation. Uh, we should have finalized by now the session, but I've been told we have an uh, additional 10, 12 minutes maximum. So I would uh, kindly ask you, Bruno, to, to of course, uh, take your time, but to stick to the seven minutes. And yeah, just to, to say that you will be presenting the last project. Uh, we go to Italy now as a hydrogen project development experts within RENA Consulting. So, Bruno, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Antonio. I will try to be uh, as quick as possible uh, to sum up with the time. Um, as Antonio said, I'm the coordinator of the Ticino Hydrogen Valley, which aims um, to develop and to replicate uh, small hydrogen economies across the northern of Italy. Uh, Ticino is uh, a small-scale hydrogen valley that was uh, funded under the last call of 2022. And uh, the maximum contribution of the project is um, the max grant. It was 7.4 millions with a total budget of uh, 18 millions uh, coming mainly from, from private. Uh, we just started in September, so uh, we, are, uh, we are quite new. Uh, we are in the month three of, uh, of our project. Uh, we are a, a small consortium of about uh, nine partners. Uh, Rina Consulting as the, the coordinator, and then we have a Life, which is uh, our uh, a technology provider and hydrogen producer. We have uh, um, also Thiers and Artelis, which they are developing uh, one of the tools that uh, Ticino we will uh, um, showcase in uh, the demonstration of the of the pros of the project, and then we have a cluster. Uh, related to the airport. Ticino is, um, as you know, it might be the only one hydrogen valley with uh, a, a center in an airport. Uh, airports have uh, become uh, a player in the in the future of, of the carbonizing uh, transport and they will have a consume which is paired to uh, a steel making company on a cement company. So the carbonizing also an environment which is complex as an airport. It's uh, very interesting from the research point of view. Uh, what we're doing in Ticino as well is deploying this five megawatt FM electrolyzer, which would be close to the airport. We will seek to integrate it with the uh, available and newcomers uh, hydrogen refueling stations. We will address mobility and energy, and we will develop a master planning tool that which would be one of our, uh, our main results, and uh, we expect to use it in a replication campaign. Um, Ticino, as I said, has this, uh, this timeline. We started in September 23. We are in the, in the part of designing the whole hydrogen uh, ecosystem around the, um, the assets that are already available 
uh, in the territory, but as well as the points that are crucial for the development of the whole in the whole ecosystem and uh, infrastructure. At the same time, we are uh, basing um, all that design and all the implementation that we're running to create this uh, master planning tool that will be used uh, further on to provide technoconomic analysis and uh, um, replication of, uh, of the hydrogen valley, the initial hydrogen valley. Um, the project governance, uh, as you know, we have the public part included within, which is the, the municipality of Ustorcizzo, uh, the regional authority where the valley will start, and uh, the association of industrials, which is a um, um, public association as well of interested parties of the territory. Uh, so in this regard, we create uh, the synergy between the public and the private uh, utilizing the already existing um, associations and, uh, and public bodies. Um, and then we have two clusters, two well-defined clusters. One is the production of hydrogen uh, and transport of hydrogen, which will be done by LIFE, which is their, their scope of work. They are producers and transporter of hydrogen across Europe, and they are starting uh, their operations in Italy thanks to this project and the contribution to the, the Clean Hydrogen Partnership, while uh, the, the airport cluster will focus on developing the infrastructure needed to um, bring hydrogen to operations in energy and transport at airport level. So we are all, all also going to test the use of hydrogen in what is called the air side, which is uh, extremely um, interesting for, uh, for developing new mobility um, transport solutions and also to adapt those that are already existing. A little bit of the, the financing, how it's done. Um, we have uh, LIFE as, as the main contributor, uh, as they are interested to enter in the, the Italian market, uh, together with the Clean Hydro Partnership and the, the other partners' contribution. This is obviously for the moment, as it's been a small scale hydrogen valley, we are always, uh, always looking for new uh, founding opportunities, and uh, we, we expect to extend the valley uh, in the course of the years. As uh, I said, one of our, um, our main uh, results would be um, this master planning tool, which is based on an already existing platform that the, the um, European Commission utilizes, uh, which is called METIS. Uh, METIS is based on Artelis Crystal Supergrid, which allows uh, to run modeling and simulation of, of complex energy systems. Uh, so in this regard, what we are doing with, uh, with Ticino, with the developing of the whole infrastructure is to populate this platform uh, with data related to hydrogen ecosystems in order to uh, allow further extension of um, an initial diagram of our initial deployment that would be the actual valley that we'll be deploying. But also uh, because we've seen that the map of Italy and the, the, the northern of Italy and also Europe um, is uh, having so many hydrogen projects. And uh, if uh, we go further and we see how it's all they are developing, they are around there, which is the, the hydrogen uh, backbone. So we believe that uh, bringing some uh, digital tools, which are um, they have the potential to provide technoeconomical an analysis and optimization, simulation, also the possibility of uh, considering the feasibility of um, collaborating with other hydrogen violence in terms of expansion will bring a uh, lot of opportunities to analyze how this could replicate in a, in a larger hydrogen economy. So um, this, this tool will be developed during the course of the project and we will uh, then uh, make it available and to replicate some studies with other hydrogen valleys. And uh, also here we see how the, the north of Italy is um, developing with the, the refueling station. So we have in all the context the opportunity to uh, start uh, considering how the hydrogen economy will develop in, uh, in the north of Italy. Uh, 
Uh, as I said, we we leverage on other projects already. In in this case, we have this uh, project called Olga, which is holistic green efforts, uh, which was founded by the, uh, Horizon 2020. Um, the the aim is to bring uh, renewable energy sources to different airports in uh, in Europe. Uh, in this case, for the Malpensa Airport, it will be the, the built up already starting of a seven kilowatt electrolyzer and a hydrogen refueling station. So what we are doing is leveraging on that infrastructure to bring more hydrogen, to increase operations, to uh, make it more available. At the same time, uh, another um, another fund uh, was just uh, announced. We had an external stakeholder, which is um, constructing a heavy duty uh, mobility uh, HR station within the Marpelsa airport for uh, the mobility of, of, of goods. So they are uh, going to, we are in, in talks to them to include them in the project as an external stakeholder and have them also in the, in our um, influence. Uh, what we are mainly developing uh, for, uh, for Italy and uh, for our Bali is uh, going into considerations of using hydrogen in an airport context, which is uh, really new. So we are in talks with the collaborating uh, authorities at national level. We are already participating in another type of um, national foundings of manifest of manifestos of interest, because this brings a lot of uh, talks. So we trying to create this this table of talks with the with the national ones. But um, what we would like to develop is a clear view of, of how hydrogen should be used at the airport context and how that could be replicated in another um, in another context. At the same time, we are having an extensive campaign of retrofitting uh, different um, mobile mobility use cases. They are included in the airport and they maybe are not seen quite um, clear how they could use hydrogen. So we will have the opportunity also to uh, interface a lot of stakeholders which are in the in the airport ecosystem. Um, just to, to finalize, we, we just started in September. So we we decided to um, to go with a real uh, loud, um, let's say, um, public event before the kickoff meeting where we have the, uh, the opportunity to invite high ranks of the of the government. In this case, we had the participation in live stream. He was supposed to present it uh, um, in person, but he couldn't of the um, Italian Minister of Infrastructure who uh, uh, took the project and said and, uh, and highlight the importance of creating these structures. And uh, this was uh, a really important start for us because it put us in the, in the top of the public opinion and uh, we, we've been uh, named a lot across across Italy. So uh, brought also a lot of um, social awareness of what we were starting and what were the, the objectives of this project. And uh, that will be all for me. For the moment, we don't have the, the, the site as we just started, but we will have it uh, very soon. I invite you to follow us on, uh, on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bruno, and, and thank you for, for being so comprehensive, also given the, the limitations we have in time. I have to say we, we will not be able to, to go into questions. Um, I mean, it was somehow a conscious decision. We really wanted to give a, a coverage of the full spectrum of the valleys. We were really hoping we would still allow for 20 minutes, 30 minutes Q&A, but as you can see, we we're out of time. However, I think it was necessary, really, I mean, common issues coming out uh, on uh, skills, on regulations, funding, training, tools, governance, different replications. I think there is a vast amount of things that everyone is going to do, different ways of doing it. And, and I think at least now we have a very good idea of what it's uh, on the table, I think. And I hope really that those out there uh, watching this um, this session get a feeling of what we of what we are supporting, get the scale of it. And of course, uh, there is uh, the contact details of each of the projects. It's are publicly available. Uh, they are published in the Commission website in in Cordis, and we are also reachable if anyone uh, today has any questions that they would like to discuss with us. As for a message to you, to to, to the speakers, I, I really happy to have met you all because I think that was really the first opportunity we have had to 
to, to do that after the project and after the grants have been signed. So probably that's, uh, as I the one somehow moderating the session, and I should take the blame on me, I, I simply call all of you, you know, to do a follow-up session in the future. I think we, we have all the elements that we need. Uh, and to continue exchanging and presenting results to the public and to continue exchanging among yourselves also with other programs and to try to together address all those all those challenges so this is uh, to you of course project coordinators but also i wanted to thank you especially as well to to victor which you have of course uh, presented the very details of green uh, highland in mallorca i know you are hosting a lot of uh, visitors that are interested to see things in the islands because people can already touch what is installed in there so i also invite everyone listening today to to visit the project and especially of course as well to to marcus and, and your team to present the platform i think it's very good that you can really give this overview we we go project by project you step back you give that overview that analysis i know there is much more uh, that uh, you could share i know there is material as well coming out in the Hadrian platform mission innovation so i would encourage everyone uh, out there as well to go and read through it so i would say that this is just part one and i would uh, basically call everyone listening and everyone in the table for part two of this type of webinars which will come hopefully next year and we will make sure that uh, we can capitalize on all your experiences once more apologies that i didn't have the the chance to do q a but i think it was worth for for the purpose of of this first um hydrogen valley session in in this year so thank you so much to all of you and to the technical team as well and to all of you that have been listening get in touch with us or or with the projects as well through through the project website